Welcome to Como. Welcome to Como. Welcome to Como. Hi, welcome to Como, Southern Highlands, Papua New Guinea. In June 2010, MCJV, a joint venture between McConnell Dowell and Consolidated Contracting Company, was awarded the contract to construct a 3.2 kilometer airfield for the PNG LNG project. Located in the remote Hela province in the highlands of Papua New Guinea, the airfield would be located at Como, just 22 kilometers from the new Hyde's gas plant, which would then condense and transport the gas via 700 kilometers of pipeline to Port Moresby, where it would be liquefied and shipped to Asia. This here is the Como airfield, uh, which will be the largest airport in Papua New Guinea. So we're building an airport, uh, the biggest in PNG, uh, 3.2 kilometer length runway to accommodate for the landing of the biggest airplane in the world, the Antonov. The landing of the Antonov will supply the Heights gas plant with oversized parts that they can't get up the Highlands Highway and must be flown in. We have many challenges on this project. One of the, the major ones is logistics. Getting all the equipment up uh, the Highlands Highway from Ley. In those days when we first started, it was a sort of a four day one way trip, bringing the convoys up here and we've had many, many loads. We crossed many bridges and these bridges are quite old uh, and the road is very, very rough. We started in a small tent to build a camp that we call a pioneer camp, a 20 man camp. The Pioneer Camp quickly progressed to a 150-man camp, which was then followed by the construction of the final, modern, high-quality 600-bed camp, with two dining rooms, an official compound, and refueling depot. We started from nothing, from a small tent, and we built a city now. The body of major health challenges, obviously, is malaria, dengue fever, and encephalitis. To mitigate that, we've got a, a company from America as a vector control, and they're doing a marvellous job going around the site, controlling mosquitoes, controlling rodents and so on. An issue they've, we've raised the challenge to is water. We're taking the water locally. Now that's treated two ways. That's treated both with chlorine and it goes through a UV system. Both systems would stand alone. We've doubled up to make sure the water is clean to drink. The key for the success of this project is building a good relation with the community. We have 800 languages uh, that are spoken in PNG. At one end of the airport to the other end, we have like so many tribes, about 15 or 14 tribes. They have lived a lived long time. They have lived in here. Well, the community relations obviously is important on this project because you know we've come in into an area where there really hasn't been worked before. And then working with the people, understanding now that we're, we're buying their land, we're giving them jobs, and we're bringing benefits to the community. With the cooperation of the people, now they are quite uh, understanding the, why the project is here, what the project is going to help them. We have strengthened the uh, CA department, which is the community affairs, and uh, we are meeting on a weekly basis with the chiefs of all the surrounding clans around us, and uh, we have formed the CIC, which is the Community Issues Committee. That has bridged the gap between MCJV and the surrounding clans. They have a very good community relationship. Uh, that's very remarkable of MCJV, what I feel here, because I see MCJV growing, I see MCJV working, uh, and I see also the people around how they deal with MCJV. People are now beginning to realize the importance of the project and then are accepting the construction team, MCJV, Exxon and everybody in the area. MCJV in consultation, alliation with Exxon have uh, come up with some community projects, water tanks, supply of medicine, assistance to schools, which in fact is paying off in the way that people now want the company presence. Another initiative, we have the Catholic Church here. We sponsored some uh, sports uh, days for the kids there. We sponsored some uh, sports team in Como. We engage with the children through the Catholic mission in the schools here, an awareness about what we're doing. We're training the children through the coloring programs that say, okay, there, you're, there's gonna be trucks out there. There is gonna be more traffic and you need to stay to the side and you need to be alert. 
Awards. Everything we do with the community, we want to make sure after we complete this project, it continues. We have been helping the local community, especially the clinic. Uh, Exxon and MCJV are working side by side to providing all necessary equipment and housing and containers, whatever they need uh, to serve the community better. Health Center in here is the only health center we have in common district and almost uh, 25 to 30,000 people come and attend this um, clinic in here. This is a project in Como and the collaboration of the people of Como they really need and I think MCJV is doing well. We're hiring a lot of people from the local communities that have never been in the industry before. This job is especially high. Generally you have a workforce that is maybe 20% untrained. On this particular project, we're running about 80 percent. The training is one of the main initiatives that we put efforts in. We upskill the people around here. We are training up the machine operators, which is an eye-opener because they are getting Australian Standard Certificate. We issued these guys with their certificates of competency, and uh, it was a big event for them, you know, and the community as well. Themselves on the day at the presentation, totally dressed in what they would usually dress in, in in ceremonial gear. The local labour have done pretty well actually. The people learn quickly, they adapt quickly and the training is continuous. We are running two pre-starts a day, one in the morning, one in the afternoon, so we can remind them of what the pre-start was all about. And we deliver it in, in all the languages that people need to hear it in and we have people who can deliver that alongside our English-speaking supervisors. We have also translated most of the JSAs into the various languages that are spoken on site. We also have so many pictorial JSAs, so everyone can understand even if he can't read. We obviously have expats from all over the world here, 36 nationalities. The operators show the local people what to do, and they follow their lead, if you like. MCJV has uh, changed this place, basically, by employing more local people here, women and men. They have never worked in any parts of uh, Papua New Guinea. Now they have been employed. So everybody is uh, benefiting tremendously from uh, MCJV's operation here. We've got about seven to eight million cubic meters of earth to level out for the runway area itself. Fills vary from 30 meters deep to 30 meter size cuts as well. The airfield was divided into five major zones, A, B, C and D, with zone E being the operations and terminal area. The soil itself proved to be extremely challenging. There were substantial variations in the types of soils across the site, requiring different treatment and solutions in different areas. We're learning curve for a lot of the earthworks guys here in dealing with the type of clays that we that we used to dealing with here. They're alicide clays, which are essentially volcanics. The compaction of the material to achieve the design has been a bit of a challenge, but that's been something that we've worked on and overcome. Throughout the project, one issue literally overshadowed all others. The weather still factor number one. The rain. The rain is continuous. Last year we had five meters of rain here. It's only the rain. I think this would be a fairly easy job if it wasn't for the rain. The weather's the, probably the biggest challenge here. A high percentage of rainfall we get typically around about four to six meters of rain um, up in the Como area each year. So for an earthworks job that's probably the single most biggest challenge. In 25 months, over 12 metres of rain fell in the area, with the peak of nearly a metre in one month. Back in January and early February, we have a bridge damage. We've had a flood event, which was a 215 millimetre uh, rainfall event, which is twice the 100-year the, the flood. So if you put that into perspective, what effect that had on us. We had to air bridge in all our essentials, our food, fuel and necessary material in. As the Como area had no existing rainfall records and the nearest region's records provided gross underestimates, this inordinate amount of rain hadn't been anticipated and caused obvious safety and mobility difficulties for all the earth-moving activities, especially on the steep slopes and gullies. 
We try to overcome the, this difficulty by increasing the number of our equipment and plants. We have also introduced the wide flotation tires. We've put wire tires on 20 of the ADTs, which has proved very successful in the mud. It's increased the loads astronomically. In the beginning, we had half a fleet of dozers that was heavy dozers. We've replaced them with the light Santui 16s with swamp tracks, and this has eased the whole mud situation. That special equipment has enhanced the performance. That is wide tyres for the, the, the machines, which float on top of this ground, which is 80% saturated. As the earthworks draws to a close, we then got to build the runway itself. So the runway comprises of about a metre of imported rock aggregates, which we've developed a quarry called TB1. We supply all the aggregates through that quarry. Those come in by tipper trucks, and we've, we've got about 467,000 cubic metres of rock to haul in just to build the pavement layers for the runway. It's about 12 or 13 kilometres from our present site, and the rock, when it comes into the site, gets stockpiled and then reprocessed at a secondary screening area, which makes the various sizes of aggregates that we need for the different layers of pavement. Once the basic earthworks were completed in each zone, the actual runway was levelled, reinforced and compacted using three layers of imported rock aggregates. Three layers of rock comprised the runway. The 1.2 metre sacrificial layer of 150 millimetre rock was laid first, followed by a 50 centimetre deep sub-base consisting of 37 millimetre aggregate. It was then topped with four 50 millimetre alternating layers of emulsion bitumen and asphalt. To produce the 50,000 tonnes of asphalt required to build the runway, MCJV built an on-site asphalt plant, which at full capacity produced 550 tonnes of hot asphalt per 10-hour day and could be worked around the clock. With the asphalting starting at the northern end and progressing southerly, the runway and airstrip soon started taking shape. So after the asphalt, there is two activities to come after that, basically the grooving and the line marking. Installation of the runway lights, fencing and preliminary landscaping indicated that the runway was almost ready for testing. The final completion and fit out of the terminal building and the installation and testing of the instrumentation, glide path and DVOR signal the facility's completion. Finally, on the 3rd of May 2013, the Como airfield was ready for the arrival of the first Antonov cargo jet. The culmination of years of effort saw the massive Russian-built Antonov cargo jet with its 69-metre wingspan and 200-plus ton payload capability land and slowly taxi to the terminal area to successfully offload the first of 88 scheduled runs. At five runs a week, the Como airfield would see three months of consistent runway use before all the major pieces of plant had been delivered. The Antonov landing on the 3rd of May it was a successful event and a successful project. The MCJV Como airfield project, an outstanding example of how a world-class project can be successfully undertaken in remote, inaccessible terrain and still leave an ongoing positive legacy for the people and future generations of Papua New Guinea.